presenting on a series of keywords around the aftermath of the zero COVID policy in China. Uh, the specialists represent a variety of expertise from cultural studies to law, history, uh, society. And so please join us for that online event. And the following day, on February 23rd, we will have an in-person event with Professor Roderick Campbell from NYU. And there's a lot more coming up after that, but we do encourage you to participate and we look forward to seeing you at future events. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Professor Hong Yingtao from the Department of Asian Languages and Cultures. He is a specialist in Chinese linguistics, and he will be introducing today's speaker, Professor Tao. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, some of you in the audience may not know as director of uh, CCS, Michael has been uh, very instrumental in organizing all those amazing CCS uh, lectures. So much gratitude, gratitude goes to him and his team, including Esther Joe at the Center for Chinese Studies. So now, uh, good morning or good afternoon or evening, <laughs> depending on where you are. Uh, a well, a warm welcome to today's uh, Center for Chinese Studies lecture. Uh, my name is uh, Hong Yin Tao. I'm a professor of Chinese linguistics in the Asian Languages and Cultures Department here at UCLA. Uh, I'm very honored today to introduce our speaker today, Professor Chiara uh, Romagnoli. Uh, Dr. Romagnoli received her PhD from uh, Sapienza University of Rome in two, 20, uh, 2007. And she's currently professor of Chinese language and linguistics uh, at Roma Tree University or Roma Three University. Uh, it's uh, probably no exaggeration to say that um, Professor Romanelli is one of the most uh, important contemporary European scholars in Chinese studies. Uh, she's uh, very well known for her research in a number of areas, including. Uh, acquisition of Chinese as a foreign or second language, Chinese vocabulary and lexicography, and Chinese discourse and grammar. Uh, she has published widely in both theoretical linguistics and Chinese language pedagogy, and blending these two fields in very nice ways, which is uh, rather rare in the field. Uh, to just give you a um, brief uh, a sample, uh, a quick sample of her publications, uh, in just uh, you know, past a few years, she published uh, two edited volumes. Uh, one is called the Lessons on Chinese Linguistics um, in 2022, last year, and one uh, called Chinese Language in Italy, uh, which was published in 2021. And uh, in 2016, she published uh, Pedagogy Grammar of Chinese. And there is also a monograph on Chinese function words in 2012. Uh, in terms of uh, scholarly service, uh, Dr. Romanelli is uh, a leader in the field. She is the coordinator of an international network group uh, on Chinese as a foreign language. And she's also deputy director of the Independent Departmental Center for studies and documentation on China and East Asia at her own university. Uh, I met at that on a personal note, uh, I was very lucky last year to be invited to be a visiting scholar at um, Roman Tree University. And I witnessed uh, firsthand there how vibrant uh, a Chinese linguistics and applied linguistics um, community there in Rome. And I think that's um, probably due largely to Dr. Romagnoli's leadership and active uh, research programs. So today, um, Professor Romagnoli's lecture will discuss uh, Chinese politics and uh, Chinese lexicography uh, in a special reference to uh, Shanghai City and uh, the modern Chinese dictionary, which is uh, the most authoritative um, you know, dictionaries in Chinese. So without further ado, please join me in warmly welcoming Professor Romanian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So good morning, everybody. First of all, uh, I would like to thank Professor Barry and Professor Tao for inviting me and uh, Professor Tao for his kind introduction. 
I'm very glad to share my uh, research with you today. Here it's almost dinner time, but for you it's morning. So I guess that you are still fresh and ready to enter the world of Chinese lexicography. In uh, today's talk, I will uh, first um, make some preliminary observations. Then I will provide the context uh, to the development of Chinese uh, lexicography. Uh, then I'll describe the history and the steps of the most authoritative Chinese monolingual dictionary, the Santa Hanyu Tsudian. Then I'll mention some uh, topics raised by the compilation of this uh, um, dictionary. And in the last part, I will um, give you some examples uh, of entries to show the choices made by the lexicographers of the last version of the dictionary. But before uh, going to the preliminary observations, as Professor Tao uh, just said, I'm um, rather interested in vocabulary and grammar. So I would like to explain why I decided to investigate the Santa again. Well, um, the reason uh, is that some years ago, um, by chance, I was uh, looking for a word and I found that a very common word was missing in the Santa Hayutsudian, and this word was Nyonai, the word for milk. And uh, on the contrary, we can find several entries, including units, which can be, in, um, which can be hardly defined and described as words. They are rather uh, phrases, sentences, sayings, even slogans. So uh, what's behind this choice? And answering this question was the departing point uh, for, my, uh, for my research. Perhaps the missing of milk, the missing of new knife was just a mistake, but then why so many other strange things in this dictionary? So uh, since this, um, talk will underline uh, the link between lexicography and social and political change. A first, perhaps uh, very ob obvious ob observation should be made. That is, in every context, dictionaries are the result of subjective choices representing specific views and independently from the status of the work, so being it prescriptive or descriptive, dictionaries tend to be consider the authority about the language, about the correct usage of a language. We don't question what a, a dictionary entry says about the word. And uh, this has been uh, nicely stated by Moon, for instance, According to this scholar, dictionaries are records of the beliefs about the language of a very small subset of the users of that language. And it is impossible for lexicographers to avoid displaying their prejudices about language in the language that they choose to define and explain. And in the same direction, uh, from the perspective of discourse uh, analysis, another scholar, uh, Benson 2001, um, defined dictionaries as a uh, not simple collection of words, but representation of language. At this point is explained by Benson for English dictionaries, but I think that this holds true also for Chinese, for the case of Chinese. And um, according to Benson, the monolingual dictionary in particular is not a natural form for the representation of knowledge of language, but an historical specific form that needs to be accounted for in terms of the broader relationship of power and control within which it emerged and developed. So I think that this was um, nicely um, appropriate also for the Chinese case. And let's start with some observations about lexicography in uh, Chinese context. Well, uh, we know that um, lexicography in China has a very long history. China boasts a long tradition of uh, lexicography. And as confirmed, for instance, by uh, Norman, in his uh, authoritative monograph on Chinese, 
Um, although China never really developed a native grand grammatical tradition, lexicography has been a central concern of the philologists since the Han Dynasty. Um, somebody considered the Arya, which is a dictionary of synonyms, compiled in the third century to be the first dictionary in Chinese. Other thing that uh, the Shuo Wen Jiezi is instead the first dictionary. In any case, collecting words, explaining the meanings, collecting the variants, the, the written variants of characters has always been a prior priority uh, for Chinese scholars. And this need did not stop till uh, recent times, but has changed according to new priorities and tendencies, of course. And um, another observation to be made is that while we have a very long tradition of uh, lexicography, of uh, dictionary making and compilation in China, research on lexicography is rather young, and um, we uh, should wait till the 20th century to have uh, monographs, papers, and um, it, um, and papers and uh, studies about lexicography. Before this time, Chinese lexicography usually took the form of uh, prefaces, postscripts, and guides to use uh, the dictionary. But the decades before and after the establishment of the People's Republic of China marked a crucial period for the development of this field because uh, lexicography was strictly associated with the complex process of the establishment of a linguistic standard and with the activities and stances promoted and represented by the Guoyu Yontong. So this uh, modernization process also affected the new guidelines for lexicographers' work. So this field was in need of, in need of new products as also underlined by the uh, father of the uh, modern literature, Lu Xun, who um, wrote that the most urgent thing to do is to have a good dictionary. So to this end, and also to better satisfy the reader's needs, uh, lexicographers try to implement new measures, such as extending the word list, including compound words, providing different methods to look up for uh, words, so not only by radicals, inserting charts and tables to illustrate the meaning and improving also the structure of the entries. But um, most importantly, in this period, we have the passage from the Zidian to the Zidian, so from the dictionary of uh, characters to the dictionaries of words. And um, the need to compile uh, dictionaries and the market potential represented by these products has been recently investigated by uh, Haltenger, who focused on lexicography during Mao's uh, period, stressing the continuity between past and present in this field. According to this scholar, making knowledge, uh, knowledge accessible and helping readers deal with changing epistemologies and terminologies, be they political or more quotidian, through publication uh, had a long history in China, as did the attempt to make a profit from their sales. And just to give, to have an idea of the um, development of lexicography in uh, the last uh, three decades, we have this index, the which collects uh, more than uh, 7,000 publications in lexicography for the last uh, century. And the vast majority of these uh, products were are um, monolingual dictionaries, followed by works on the history of Chinese lexicography, uh, bilingual dictionaries, and volumes pertaining other aspects of this uh, field. So um, in the late uh, 70s, uh, thanks to the strong support of the public institution and also the planning of the uh, lexicographic work to be done, we have a rapid development of this field of lexicography. Of lexicography. 
And uh, we also have in the same years, the uh, foundation of one of the most uh, important journal, Sashu Yanzhou, uh, for lexicography study in China. This was founded in uh, 1979, and it's so crucial that two scholars, Zhang and Peng, considered the journal foundation as the beginning of the last phase of lexicography research in their periodization of Chinese lexicography. And more or less in the same years, the first local association dealing with lexicography in China was also founded in Shanghai and followed by uh, many other association, uh, local associations around the country. But uh, since I uh, focused on one particular case, the Santa Hayuts again, I now um, introduce this dictionary, which is probably the most authoritative, authoritative uh, monolingual dictionary of contemporary uh, Chinese. So uh, the first thing to, um, to say probably is that the compilation of Sienta uh, Han began in the 50s within the works for the language reform promoted by the government soon after the proclamation of the People's Republic of China in 1949. And almost in the same years, uh, the uh, Chinese Academy of Science uh, has been also founded. And a few years later, a section of this academy, uh, the Bian Jishe, the Dictionary Editorial Office, was set up to carry out the project of the Sienta Hayuts again. And uh, another important event connected with the compilation of the dictionary was a conference um, on the standardization of modern Chinese, uh, which took place in 1955. And in that occasion, the urgent task to compile a monolingual dictionary was mentioned, and um, the linguist, the most important linguist who uh, took part to the debate, directly discussed uh, this topic. For instance, Luo Changpei and Lu Shuxian um, mentioned seven tasks to be carried out in order to standardize the language. And um, among uh, these tasks, there's also the compilation of a dictionary. They say that the dictionary is the most important instrument to implement standardization. The lexicon is the building material of language, and now the majority of confusion in the usage of language is linked to the lexicon. This has gone through a huge change in the last decades, but we do not have a dictionary that reflects the real situation of modern Chinese lexicon. Modern Chinese is not anymore the correspondence between one word and one character, but people still use the word dictionary of characters instead of dictionary of words. So this, this was the um, worry and the urgent task that they uh, um, brought in this conference. And um, the dictionary, the Santa Hayot Sedien, has, uh, since the very beginning, exerted such an influence that the field of studies called Xian Han Xue has started to uh, emerge and um, this field of studies uh, is mainly published in Chinese, so um, with contributions mainly circulating within Chinese um, readership. And um, Lu Xuxian, the linguist Lu Xuxian, was also involved in the trial versions of the Santa Hayot printed in uh, 1960 and 1965 strongly criticized during the Cultural Revolution and the reprinting in 1973 of the proof edition raised a debate, a trial against the Santa Hayuts again, which was accused to be um, political inadequate. And this accuse took the form of the classical uh, political discourse. Uh, this quotation is um, come from the criticisms published by the Journal of the uh, of Beijing Taoshe, and um, it is uh, written that the work, the Santa Hayut Sadian, is the first medium-sized dictionary 
appeared after the Cultural Revolution. Therefore, we have reason to hope in this work. Nevertheless, after having flipped through the dictionary, we realize that this is not the dictionary that workers, farmers, and soldiers need, but is a poopery of uh, feudalism, capitalism, and revisionism. So this was the um, very strong uh, criticism given to the first uh, trial versions of the Santa Hayuks again. The other linguists, apart from Lu Xuxian, who worked at the first, uh, at the first editions of the Santa Hayuksadian, was Din Shenshu, who was also the chief editor of the first edition of the dictionary, uh, which was published in the same year and month, December 1978, of the third plenary session of the 11th Central Committee, which marked the beginning of Chinese opening a reform uh, policy. And um, the preface of this uh, edition, of this first edition, reminds about the troubles this dictionary has, has to face during the Cultural Revolution, stating that the revision process has, has been hindered by the serious interference of the Gang of Four, and of course could be completed before, but it was impossible. And uh, again, from the preface of the Santa Hayut Sadien, uh, the goal of this dictionary um, is uh, to promote Mandarin and to encourage the standardization of Chinese. And this makes this work a prescriptive rather than a descriptive uh, dictionary. Again, uh, Norman, um, describes uh, the steps forward made in the compilation of this work, stating that it is an outstanding example of lexicography comparable to the best efforts produced in other countries. It sets a high standard for future dictionary compilers and is bound to have a lasting effect in this field. And um, as you can see from this uh, slide, uh, from the proof edition to the last version of the Santa Hayut Sadien, the time interval uh, among different editions is not always the same. In some cases, uh, there are only a few years, uh, for instance, uh, from the first to the second edition. And sometimes it took much longer as before the third uh, edition. The last edition has been published only four years after the sixth. And this is also uh, one of the reasons why I was curious to look for the reasons or to look for the differences between the two uh, editions. Sometimes <clears throat> the, um, the reason to publish a new edition is uh, strictly connected to the word list. For instance, in the second edition, that published in 1983. Um, in this uh, edition, um, some entries with strong political connotations uh, have been deleted. I'm referring to entries such as uh, Tai Yuijin, the Great Leap for World, or Samya Hongqi, the Three Banners. Uh, or Wu Chan Jie Ji, Wang Hua Da Gemin, the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution, and uh, Zhou Zipai, which means uh, capitalist order. And uh, the third edition of the Santa Hayat again appeared 13 years after the second, so um, some years later. And in this case, uh, the main novelties of this edition are the insertion of many neologies and the appendix including words beginning with alphabetic letters. With respect to the neologies selected, some of them uh, concerns new entities of social life or technological fields such as, such as Dian Shouju, Kala Ok, Fan Se, which is, was another way to uh, refer to introspection, or Tuan Huo. We also find some abbreviations, which are very productive device to uh, form new words in Chinese. So for instance, Wang Bao for Huang Jin Bao Hu, environmental protection, and Sai Dian for Sai Se Dian She. 
Um, after only two years from this edition, a committee composed of 15 experts and guided by Tsao Xianzhou has been established to revive the Santa Hanyu Tsetien. And in this case, the revision was mainly aimed at increasing the, the neologies and uh, adding uh, the part of speech uh, labels, which were missing before the fourth and fifth, especially the fifth edition. And the first result of this uh, revision process was the fourth uh, edition published in uh, 2002, the so-called uh, enlarged edition with pink pages containing uh, 1,200 neologies. And this, this version was considered a preliminary uh, result with the more mature uh, achievement uh, represented by the fifth uh, edition which appeared only three years uh, later. And in this uh, edition, uh, the number of neologies uh, increased, um, increased to uh, 6,000. And um, we also have an improvement of the layout with the number of the different meanings uh, within an entry, uh, the usage of the double slash for separable verbs and the original forms of phonetic loans. And uh, with the sixth uh, edition, which was published seven years later, um, the word list is still uh, richer with many more uh, monomorphic entries, uh, most including toponyms, surnames, and technological terms, 3,000 new words, and many more uh, new meanings for a total number of almost um, 70,000 entries. So one of the most um, discussed topic for the sixth edition was the word list. And um, in particular, the new entries uh, of, the, of the sixth edition. And um, some scholars have divided these new entries of the sixth edition into three main categories, which are the neologies, indicating social changes or new phenomena in Chinese society, long words and uh, words uh, entering in uh, Pudonghua from um, the dialectal uh, uh, area. So for the first category of uh, neologies, we have, for instance, Bei Piao, Shang Li, uh, San Pei, Mai Guang, uh, Feng Kofei, but also words referring to uh, Western uh, culture or society, such as uh, Gan Renjie and uh, Qin Renjie. We also have long words, uh, mainly from English, uh, such as Shai uh, from Cher and Ding Ke, uh, the dual income no kids uh, couple, and also uh, but also uh, long words from uh, Japanese, of course. And um, as for the dialectal words, we integrated in Mandarin, we mainly have from the prestigious area of uh, the Cantonese speaking areas, such as Good Side Way, or also, and also from other uh, parts of China, such as Dongbei and uh, Taiwan. And um, among the topics um, discussed uh, after the publication of the sixth edition of the Santa Hanyutsudian, there was also the missing uh, meaning of uh, the word tonjo, which of course means um, comrade, is a political um, form of address from comrade, but which has uh, been also used to mean homosexual, um, especially from the um, gay rights activists in Hong Kong. And um, one of the chief editor of the sixth edition explained this choice during an interview and um, stating that, of course, they know this meaning and do not care if people like to use this word in this way. But since the dictionary is a normative one, uh, they do not ac accept this uh, new meaning. They do not include this new meaning uh, of uh, tondre in the entry. And this means they do not promote, neither focus on such things. And this was something that was um, said by the compiler. And of course, 
Um, it is hard to imagine that this form of address could be officially shared uh, in this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the um, last edition, the seventh edition, we uh, arrive uh, to the last uh, version of the Sienta Hayutz Dien, the one compiled after the election of President Xi Jinping in 2013 and after the transition of power from Hu Jintao to the new uh, President Xi Jinping. And um, this new version, the seventh version, uh, in this new version, the um, ideological content, uh, the ideological nature, the Susian scene, and also the class nature, the Jiejie scene of the dictionary has been um, has been uh, underlined by different parts, both by um, Chinese scholars, but also Western scholars. For instance, a young uh, colleague of mine, Bertolesi 2022, for instance, mentioned the debate about these two features of the dictionary. And uh, one uh, Chinese scholar, Tang 2018, Explicit, explicitly states that every revision of the dictionary has paid particular attention to the ideological content of the work, and that this feature is expressed by the word list, Schultz, by the, the, the definition provided, uh, and by the examples provided. He also explains that this uh, edition includes a, as new entries and new meanings, those usage and words um, appeared in the new passage of political power to, to Xi Jinping. So the, this new edition is rife, uh, is rife with Chinese president uh, political thought. And many of the phrases included are in fact part of the new uh, political discourse. Uh, the new entries include many uh, phrases and uh, sayings. And as clarified by Tan, these items uh, mainly pertain to two um, aspects. The first includes the principles and constructs of Xi Jinping government. And the second relates to notions related uh, particularly to the party ethics and specific policies. So if we look at those reported here, for instance, Zhou Guo Li Jian, or the Chinese dream, Zhong Guo Man, Xin Chan Tai, Se Ge Chuan Mian, and many other, Ida Yi Lu, everybody knows, um, we, um, some of them, for instance, contain numbers and morphemes, which are fully understandable in, in the actual uh, political context. And as for the entries related to uh, party ethics, uh, again, we have uh, many of them are not uh, strictly speaking words, they are phrases or even slogans or sayings, as the last one, quotations such as study, I should yin. So uh, these are not words. So uh, we now see uh, the choices made by the uh, compilers of the seventh edition. We focus on the word list, which is, uh, again, among the most discussed topics in the compilation of new versions of the dictionary. And I'll base my analysis on some reports published on the journal Sushu Yanzhou, which is a very prestigious journal in uh, Chinese. And uh, they are all uh, rather um, apologetic toward the dictionary compilers. So, uh, for instance, Canelio, uh, 2018, they uh, claim that the new words have been included following four principles. Uh, words should, of course, belong to the linguistic standard, uh, to the linguistic system, being widespread, and uh, they have, uh, they should have uh, vitality, uh, mm, mm, this uh, report, in this report, it is claimed that a new word uh, to enter, to, to be included in the Sienta Hayut Sedien should um, wait uh, almost 10 years, more or less 10 years. But some words, some key words, 
for some words, this time interval has been ignored because they were already very widespread and very well known by the, by the readership. So they were already part of the political discourse. And, and this is the case of uh, San Yen, San Shi, Sada Chuan Mian, uh, Xin Chan Tai, Itai Lu, and, and so on. And um, of course, a uh, very hot topic and uh, uh, for the new entries of the Xian Tahan Yutsadian and for any uh, new dictionary, are the uh, words, uh, new words coming from the internet world. And uh, in this case, the scholars, uh, these scholars claim that the last version has included almost 20 items, all widely used and contributed to the richness of modern Chinese lexicon. Although the meanings expressed by words such as Ni Xi, for instance, or Tu Cao or Pai Juan, and, have been already expressed by other words, existing words, but in this case, um, the compilers claim that the new usages better satisfy speakers' needs, speaker um, actual need, actual usage of language. But it is not that all new words um, and words um, coming from the internet have been uh, included in the last version of the Santa Hayutsadian they do not receive all the same treatment. And scholars themselves notice these scholars can you know, and justify the asymmetry, uh, for instance, between the first group of words in this slide and the second group. So for instance, we have in the first group, bookworm, xueba uh, or nuannan, uh, caring man, family oriented man, and new hanza, masculine woman. These are have been accepted. And um, on the other hand, uh, words having a, an opposite meaning, like unsuccessful student, rubbish man, or effeminate man, have not been uh, included in the last version of the Santa Hanyutsadian. And the motivation for this choice is given in terms of frequency of meaning, because according to these scholars, there is no clear distinction between these words, the words of the second group and those already existent. And uh, also a moral evaluation is given to uh, not include this word. For instance, the same case um, was uh, raised by the exclusion of Shen Nan and Shen Yu, uh, which uh, indicate men or women above 30 years old and not married, which when have not been included in the sixth uh, edition of the Santa Hanyu Tsadian. And the choice was uh, in a similar way justify mentioning the meaning, not clear and not uh, respectful enough. So a kind of uh, moral evaluation was given in this uh, choice. And um, in describing the uh, neologism included in the last version uh, of the Asienta Hanyu Tsadien, Kan and Liu state that there are not many not, not many uh, neologies, but belong to different fields, um, to different semantic fields. And uh, new formations referring to facts or social phenomena, which are surely not positive, have been also included. And the two uh, quoted example are uh, Yi Nao and uh, Luo Guan. The first one refers to the um, violence, to the violent uh, acts against medical staff or facilities, which have uh, occurred in China. The second one, Luo Guan, uh, is instead um, a term which uh, is used to refer to official whose wife and children uh, Leave China to, to go in a foreign country. And sometimes mm, this is uh, associated with corruption cases. So, um, also in this case, uh, the moral weight of the dictionary is confirmed by the scholars uh, who uh, comment this choice of the compilers, claiming that. Uh, the dictionary, the dictionary has included these uh, items in order to show 
uh, to the society this uh, uh, illegal phenomenon. Okay, as for the, um, um, the form of the new entries, according to one in John 2018, we have um, completely new words with new meanings, such as for instance, 2D to reach the lowest price or amount. We have uh, additional meaning for old words, for instance, umai, which is the um, kind of pollution caused by, the kind, kind of fog caused by pollution. And also archaism keeping the original meaning, which were uh, included in the last version of the Sienta Hayutsu again. And the same uh, scholars uh, classify the almost um, 500 new entries into 13, almost 13 uh, different semantic categories. But if we uh, look at the categories proposed and at the examples provided, we will see how the vast majority of these categories concern the fields of uh, societies, uh, society, politics, and education. So, um, for instance, to one of the field of the first field belong words and phrases such as uh, Guangpan Sinto, which is a political campaign, and um, many others uh, concern the politics and uh, education uh, field. And the same scholars also provide uh, some uh, quantitative account about the origins of new entries in the last version of Santa Hayutz again, uh, which are mainly new formations. Uh, almost 75% uh, of the new entries are new formations and include words such as Baohom, for instance. Uh, the remaining uh, entries, new entries are archives, uh, for instance, Ding uh, Yui uh, which means to regard as authority and expression for, from the written language, for instance, Nitian, uh, which uh, now on, also means um, extraordinary. And uh, we have only a few words uh, from uh, spoken language, um, very few long words or uh, words um, originating from uh, one dialect. And in order to see uh, which neologisms have been uh, inserted are welcome from the um, compilers of the Santa Hayutz again, and which are not, I checked a publication released every year by the, mystery, by the Chinese Ministry of Education so it's a very official publication, a very official source. And in particular, I checked the appendix of the uh, 2017 edition, which collects uh, neologies from uh, 2013 to 2016. And the vast majority of them are not included in the last version of the Santa Hayots again. So um, we have words expressing negative social phenomena like uh, I was way, uh, patriotic thief, or uh, Tidwan and Co, which uh, refers to population, low income population, but also neutral words like Jian Jian to speak the truth or Russian Thai uh, internet generation. And there are only four, uh, three, uh, sorry, three um, neologisms um, of this publication, which have been included in the last version of the Santa Hayutz at the end. And these are uh, Chongdian Zhuang, uh, the charging station, uh, Tuei, which means to attack uh, verbally, uh, so in internet. And um, as I said, also Nitian, which now means extraordinary. Okay, so, I go to my conclusion. So we have seen that the choices made for the last version confirm uh, an attitude of the Santa Hayots at the end. And I think that what we, uh, I said about the previous editions already shows the link between this dictionary and political events. The last edition is very um, 
it marks a continuity in this uh, respect in terms uh, and it's very conservative in terms of the uh, type of neologisms included but include many uh, new entries which are items representative of uh, current political affairs so the literature on this dictionary uh, i should say has been mainly published in chinese and this is a field of research which is uh, mainly written and uh, discussed within Chinese uh, academia. And one exception is Li 2014, which is actually not a linguistic but a social political report, social political account of the Santa Hanyu Tsadian. And his view confirms the departure point of my talk claiming that this dictionary is by no means an apolitical reference book. It is a potential site for the exercise of political power and a reflection of the authority's attitude on how reality should be generalized and conveyed by true words. So thank you very much for your attention. This is some of the references I use for my article. Thank you very much, Kira. Uh, this is a very interesting talk, and uh, we don't hear people talk about uh, lexi lexicography in our know, work, especially in Chinese. So uh, now um, uh, we're open to audience uh, questions. If anyone has questions, as uh, Professor Barry noted, you can post it in a QA session. Um, you can also, I guess, you can ask. So while people are thinking or posting, let me ask um, a question. Uh, I think the, the uh, you know, you noticed the seems like there are more political terms used in the new, probably the latest version of the dictionary. Um, that, that seems to be very interesting, you know, maybe in uh, different, you know, uh, with different government in China, their political ideological control may be, uh, you know, different in terms of the degree. If that's reflected in the dictionary, making, is there any way we can compare, you know, let's say uh, after 1979, you know, uh, when China opened up the door for, you know, open, with the open door policy, there are, there are several, you know, um, government, you know, uh, changes uh, since 1979, all the way up to the current government. Uh, there are several additions is there any way to quantify the proportion of uh, contemporary, you know, political terms uh, mm -hmm. across the different governments? So I wonder if there is a way to do that, and um, you know, to show maybe as a way to show how you know uh, tight or you know uh, relaxed that the government you know controls ideology and uh, how that's reflected in uh, you know in the area of uh, language planning and, uh, you know, the dictionary making and things like that. Hmm. Thank you very much for your remark. Um, well, uh, I don't know if there are any quantitative account of this aspect of the compilation, but uh, what is rather striking for me was the inclusion of um, lexical units, which are not words at all. They are very long, they are um, slogans, sayings, and they were uh, already included in other editions of the Santa Hanyutsadan from the very beginning. But what has changed is that, uh, for instance, is if we compare in the um, third edition, the, there was a lot of uh, neologisms um, reflecting the new uh, realia in, in people's life. For instance, technological life, technological object instruments, so on. So the the focus was on the improvement of the quality and uh, of life of people. 
while in this last edition is the the main thing the striking thing is that uh, there is the um, political thought in the pages of the dictionary much more than maybe in the 90s which were completely different from a political from the political uh, point of view uh, it would be very interesting to quantify the the terms but i don't know of study uh, who have done uh, such a such a quantitative study it would be very nice to have this uh, data it's 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 not easy eh? okay so we have some comments or questions in the discussion section um I, I should note that some of the user names are mine. Uh, actually, they come from different people. Although it looks like you know I'm the only one, uh, because we for some reason I think when we registered for the talk there were changes. So uh, we probably use the same um, same login ID or seminar webinar ID, but they are actually from different um, audience members. So I think uh, Dari um, has a couple of comments, one about uh, the term Da Yue Jin, and then you also have uh, another comment about your father's involvement in the city. And Dari, you want to say something about that? Um, if you want to turn on your microphone. Yeah, please go ahead, Dari. Yes. Uh, can I? Can you hear me? Yes. yes I can hear. Yeah, um, my father was involved in um, Han Yu Dao Zi Lian. Okay. Uh, Han Yu Dao Zi Lian in 1975. He told me a lot of stories inside out because uh, that was the time when when uh, Zhou and I was uh, seriously ill. When the dictionary conference was held in Guangzhou in 1978, uh, 75, for a month, for a month, they discussed the issue of why dictionaries must be made, must be compiled. So um, I don't know when the Westerners uh, know those stories, because uh, those stories were were um, I I would say that. Uh, it was hard to make a dictionary because of the political situation. Um, when I was a young man, we used this dictionary. For more than 20 years, China did not have big dictionaries. This is Xinhua Zilian. It was made in 1950s by a group of uh, students of uh, Beida, uh, uh, Beijing University. Well, um, I was told by my father that in 1970s, Many Chinese diplomats, when China established diplomatic relations with Canada, Italy, and many other European countries. And China sent ambassadors to these countries. And these countries pro presented their encyclopedia, their dictionaries to Chinese ambassadors. What can Chinese could Chinese ambassadors? Um, give well present. They only could have this small pocket dictionary to present to give in return. It was a shame. This shame was reported to Zhou and I, and they return. They report that to Premier Zhou, and Premier Zhou said that this must be on the agenda to compile four hundred dictionaries. So a conference decided by state council was held in Guangzhou in 1975. So my father was Jie um, Diao, was borrowed to participate in the compiling of this Han Yu Da Zilian. So it was not so simple. Li Xiang and Ding Shensu did not include the word Great Leap Forward. What was Great Leap Forward? I went to the countryside. I knew what happened to the peasants. It's awkward to have that entry in the dictionary. 
to praise it, it was not true. To, uh, to criticize it, it was impossible. So Yao Wenyuan, well, when he was, he was a propaganda, head of a propaganda machine, and he decided to cancel or to only allow Xian Dai Han Yu Zilian to be circulated circulated inside a Neibu Faxing, to be circulated inside China, not in public. I saw that dictionary in 1974. So, uh, so it is, um, well, I can hardly imagine that uh, to compile such a dictionary, the Chinese professors need approval from Premier Zhou Enlai. And then I have a dictionary of uh, of Zhang Han Da Zilian. My father's mentor was um, Zhang Yixuan, editor in chief of Zhang Han Da Zilian. In this dictionary, he expressed his thanks to Mr. Deng, Deng Xiaoping, to approve to approve the publication of this dictionary which he spent more than 60 years from 1928. He did, not, he did not leave to see the dictionary publication. He died in 1983. The dictionary, dictionary came out in 1985. And this dictionary is widely used in the world. But this dictionary was almost killed in 1966. This is what I know about the dictionary. So, no. so even, even when my father compiled this Han Yu Da Zilian, every entry must be based on the Geng Yang Ban Xi, eight theatrical works of um, Peking Opera, uh, <laughs> well, uh, presided by Jiang Qing. So that's the problem. So my father told me that all the all the preparatory work later on was deleted because uh, it was full of Yang Ban Xi words of uh, what the 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 words of uh, theatrical works of uh, revolutionary theatrical works of uh, eight Peking operas. Okay, thank okay. you, uh, Dari. Thank you very much for your. Uh interesting uh, even insiders you know uh stories and comments i think that the you know, show you know how political you know influence uh, how strong the political influence can be in uh, impacting the uh, chinese dictionaries in uh the um, prc so thank you very much for your very interesting uh insights so I also have other comments i think uh, one although it's my name uh, that's yeah. actually for Someone in the audience uh, is about the um, examples, uh, example mm -hmm. sentences. If you have example sentence, they can be political. Um, so did you observe any of that? Yeah, and there are also, there are also some studies about this. And uh, some examples were, not, not many, but some examples were, have been changed in the last ed edition in this uh, direction. For instance, I remember one case which uh, is uh, was about the um, the strong tendency to imitate the Western uh, culture. So sometimes there is this uh, tendency to um, to give a point of view instead to represent and describe a world. So yes, uh, they can be uh, politicized, and and it's also a topic of the modern Chinese lexicography. And as for the uh, question of uh, Yan Liu, yes, I think that is 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 surely the case that the lexicographers uh, wait to see if neologisms have uh, uh, a certain type of vitality. And one of the study I quoted, which was a very serious one, um, provided the data in terms of frequency, and uh, they quantify uh, the time. Uh, of uh, the new term and the new entry, uh, but uh, they also justify the inclusion of terms which are rather young, but uh, and not so much uh, 
I mean, they're frequent in political discourse, but not in, um, in everyday life. But there, there was this urgency to, uh, to give them an um, official status and to put them in the dictionary. And this is what they do in the last version of the Santa Hayut Sadian. Thank you. Uh, I think a related question for me would be, uh, you know, for Chinese dictionaries, you have to select, you know, how stable those new and, you know, new terms may be. But I, I don't think that's um, a problem, you know, peculiar to Chinese dictionaries alone. Uh, you know, if you think of English dictionaries, Italian dictionaries, uh, you know, in the, in the era of uh, the internet and uh, uh, you know, mobile technology, new words are emerging, you know, all the time. So I wonder, you know, like the Ox Oxford Dictionary of English, and um, there must be some very important Italian language dictionaries. I wonder uh, if um, the European tradi tradition, you know, European scholars have to deal with the same issue of emerging, you know, words. Uh, do they have... Uh, you know, the way they handle the new words, uh, neologisms, uh, are they different from the Chinese, Chinese uh, editors or do they share similar, you know, thoughts, uh, you know, using similar methods in dealing with those new words? Can you well, share um, this one? We have, we have different traditions uh, for European languages, of course, and uh, maybe in Italy, uh, there was this linguist called uh, Tullio de Mauro who uh, made a huge difference in uh, dictionary compilation because he uh, paid attention to the usage and to the spoken uh, aspect of uh, Italian uh, language. So it was not much about neologism, but about uh, going against uh, the puristic view of language and the prescriptive uh, uh, fashion mm -hmm. of all dictionaries. So in, in one direction, you have these uh, uh, usage-oriented dictionaries, and this is the, the dictionary uh, compiled, for instance, by the, by the Maure, and then you have the old, old um, fashion of making dictionary, and from some aspect, being uh, the Santa Hayots at the end, a dictionary for the standardization of language, it goes in this direction of, uh, of set a standard. So it cannot be inclusive uh, and it cannot be um, um, purely descriptive in this in this sense so i can i can imagine that this is also why uh, the choice to uh, not to include many uh, neologies especially long words mm. Mm. i have uh, some other thoughts um but uh, i'll see other Okay, Yi, Yi, can you maybe just uh, speak out? Yi Ren is uh, one of our graduate students. Yi, can you talk? Or? Uh. Oh, sorry, I, <laughs> I was not sure how to uh, unmute myself. Um, thank you for such an interesting talk. Um, I found the introduction of the new entries of the um, internet neologisms added to the Xiandai Han Yuxian really um, just fascinating. So just out of curiosity, I was wondering if some of the neologisms that seem uh, a little bit outdated right now are ever removed from the newer editions of the dictionary. So as has the editorial board of the dictionary has ever addressed such feature of timeliness of those neologisms? Um, just a curious question, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Actually, I did not find studies uh, about this because once the, um, neologisms is inserted and then it's um, frequently used. It's no more a neologist in the, in the next edition. It's just considering an entry has another. So um, I, don't, I don't know about studies that quantify the neologisms remo removed in the last version. On the contrary, I think that once they enter the dictionary, then they stay uh, there because uh, it, it means that the compilers 
believe and claim that this world is rather stable and so can be uh, considered as a, a basic, uh, the, the bulk of the Chinese lexicon. So maybe they have no reason to remove in such a short time. The, the, the entries that were removed, for instance, uh, in the second edition of the dictionary were removed just for political reason because they um, they stand for movements, for um, political events. They were too uh, sensitive to to distant or to um, just to blame. That was the reason. It was not a linguistic reason. It, I think that was uh, of the um, a change in the political agenda and the political tendency. Anyway, thank you for, for, the, for the question. Mm, I have another question maybe uh, regarding, I think you mentioned several times that uh, monolingual dictionary. I think most of those dictionaries are written for native speakers of Chinese you know, to use. They are not intended for learners of Chinese. So in the case of uh, Xinhai Han uh, Sidian, are there any efforts uh, in the past where they want to translate the dictionary uh, in some way to make it accessible to non-native speakers, although it doesn't really make much sense, but sometimes it might be helpful, you know, for scholars like you, and you know, um, you know, outside China, who uh, study the Chinese language, uh, even though uh, Chinese is not your native language, but if they could um, translate, uh, you know, the entries in some way and make the dictionary more accessible to people outside the uh, China proper, you know, that might be an interesting thing to do, but I wonder if they have ever done something like that. Yeah, yeah, they did. There is a version of the Xiantan Hayu Tzidian, which is a uh, um, in which you have the entry, uh, entries definition translated in uh, English. It's the mm -hmm. Chinese, contemporary Chinese uh, dictionary. And the word list is the one of the Xiantan Hayu Tzidian, I think that is the fifth edition of the Santa Hayut Sudian, but is in any case very hard for learners of Chinese to follow those mm. definitions mm. Uh, because um, in many cases you don't know the words they are going to, the, the words used to explain the entry. <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes it's rather tautological definition. So for us, it's very difficult to, to understand, to grasp. It could mm. be useful to um, explain the language using the same language, but at very advanced level of uh, mastery of uh, Chinese, I guess. Okay. I guess there's no Italian version of the dictionary. Probably uh, most like English. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Italian. Okay. So also you mentioned uh, the, the way they handle the so-called alphabet words. Uh, I remember uh, in the Chinese language circle, there was some di discussion about how to deal with alphabet words because Chinese words are normally written in Chinese characters. But then uh, you have uh, long words, you know, short forms that come from other languages, especially English and, uh, you know, the Romanization forms. Uh, there are so many of those because of the uh, information, you know, uh, exchange, uh, explosion in information exchange uh, in the era of uh, the internet. So I, I believe there was some discussion in the Chinese uh, government you know, about uh, regulation, you know, in. Uh, using or avoid using those um, yeah. short forms in alphabet words. And uh, that has implications for the uh, collection of uh, alphabet uh, words, short forms in a dictionary. So I wonder if, what's the current practice? Uh, do they have to get rid of all the alphabet uh, short forms or you know, acronyms? Or do they still collect you know, some of the commonly used uh, alphabet words in the newest edition of the dictionary? What's well, the current situation? 
At the beginning, um, when uh, this uh, novelty was inserted, there was a debate, uh, and there were this uh, there was a letters to the uh, committee of the dictionary against this choice because th there were these uh, let's call them poorest language poorest people who thought that this uh, uh, alpha the usage of alphabetic letter could uh, somehow. Uh, challenge the um, prestige of Chinese um, writing and Chinese language. But then, I mean, um, they, are, they were put it in the last part of the dictionary as they are now. And it's like uh, maybe 20 pages. And they are mainly uh, either um, international acronyms, which widely, widely circulate, circulates for instance, in print articles and advertisement and newspaper, or um, um, or uh, abbreviation plus uh, character, so a blind uh, combination of the two. And um, I have to also to to say that in the um, papers, the academic papers that I have read for. Uh, to, to investigate this topic, I did not find uh, uh, criticism about this choice. So uh, it seems like it's not it's not viewed as a challenge or as a danger for Chinese uh, language or writing system. So I think that this is something that it's already uh, accepted. And there are not many. Okay. That's interesting. So you, they yeah. use uh, some kind of appendix to list uh, uh, all the common used ones. Yeah. Yeah, and this is I, probably has also to do with the widespread usage of internet by the uh, yeah. readers uh, community. So nobody blamed the usage of blind uh, forms. Yeah. Any other Questions from members of the audience? Okay, uh, Dari. I have a question or a comment. Um, you talk about the new new terminology. Um, I know that uh, Westerners frequently publish their dictionaries, such as uh, New Webster Dictionary. Uh, well, this dictionary was published probably in 1960s. Um, well, uh, for Chinese, I think um, when my father was alive, he told me that uh, in order to keep the dictionary uh, as long as possible, you have to avoid political terms. If Da uh, Yujin, such a term, uh, such an entry uh, is collected, it, and then in 10 years, Da Yujin probably would be, um, the comment would be different. So that's why Ding Su and Li Xuxiang try to avoid that. So, um, well, what is your uh, suggestion about the dictionary lexicography? How do you weigh? How do you how do you balance political terms or some terms which are probably a very, a, a very well fashionable but very short? In ten years or twenty years, he died, and for such a dictionaries. Now for such a term, entries, is it possible to uh, to enter it or not? Well, that's uh, just a comment and a question. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm not a dictionary compiler, so I cannot give my personal uh, opinion on this. I think that for, in some cases, it makes it makes no sense to, to avoid the usage of some terms. For instance, there will be always uh, a communist party and so why not put the uh, the term for it while for specific campaign for specific policy well maybe they could be just uh, temporary uh, or fashionable labels in in a short period of time so it would be better to avoid but this is this is not what the comparison of the six of the seven edition done have done so um I don't know how to answer to your question. It's it's a very uh, delicate matter, matter and political at the same time. Thank you. Uh, and uh, when I was a young man, we have some many terms which died out. For instance, harvesting dance. 
harvesting dance for the young people in Sichuan area, it mean, means to steal the, the vegetables from the farmers. That was a very bad term to refer to their awkward situation. And such a term is never understood by younger generations or for those who, who never went to the countryside. So that's, that's the, the question. If, if those terms are not collected in the dictionary, the future generations of the people will not understand what people are talking about. So this is um, what I, well, I, I'm not a dictionary uh, dic dictionary fan, and, and my father was involved in that dictionary. So I know some stories, and I also uh, have some friends of uh, linguistics. And my, I myself uh, majored in applied linguistics in Guangzhou, in China in 1980s. But I, but later on, I de 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 deserted because I, well, I, am, I follow my father's full step to make, uh, to make, uh, to, uh, to do research on Chinese Buddhist, Chinese Buddhism and Chinese religions. So currently I'm working on Chinese Buddhist canon. So, but I'm still very much interested in such a dictionaries because uh, I need dictionaries to deter, uh, to define the terms which I uh, want to convey to both sides, either both Chinese and Westerners. So that so that's why I uh, sometimes I I try to learn terms from young Chinese because I couldn't understand what they are talking about. So I even when I return home, I have to ask them, and and I I have the same experience with um, um, Eugene Wu. Professor Eugene Wu was um, curator of Harvard Yanjin Library, and I when I had a talk with him, we spoke Sichuanese. I have a feeling that he was speaking something of my father's generation, because he he left China for many years and he. Did not speak the Sichuan the, the, the Sichuan dialect that we spoke. Oh. Yeah. Something wrong. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just temporarily. Oh, I see. Okay. 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 I I finish. Uh, thank you very much. Jeff. Just okay. uh, have some some thought about uh, dictionaries and uh, and what I know about uh, Xian Dai Han Yu Zi Lian. Because um, because um, um, when I was a stu student of um, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, um, well, many of, some of my friends were were very close to. Um, Din Shen Su or Li Su Xiang, or they, their, their, their mentors or their supervisors were students of uh, Din Shen Su or Li Zong or um, Li Su Xiang. Yeah, so, uh, so that's why I, I feel this uh, lecture very, um, I, 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 like, I like it. I like to hear your suggestions and your, your understanding of Chinese dictionary, especially in the perspective of a long Chinese who understands Chinese language and knows where, where how to improve the uh, lexicography or the combining of Chinese dictionary. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I, uh, yeah, that's my. Thank you. Any other? Comments or questions from our audience? If not, I have another quick question since we are talking about political influence on the compilation of dictionaries. I wonder how Shanghai City and deals with uh, politicians, you know, uh, proper names, uh, you know, politicians such as uh, in the area of uh, the cross-street relationships, such as Taiwan, you know, politicians such as uh, uh, Li, Li, Li Denghui or Ma Yingjiu, do they collect, uh, do they have interest for politicians at all? Or only the very, you know, traditional 
names such as uh, Sun Dongshan or Jiang Jiesh? Maybe neither. I can check here, but I don't think they have uh, proper names. Okay, so they basically try to avoid um, yeah. inclusion of uh, contemporary politicians. Yeah, yeah. Whether okay. they are from Taiwan. Names in general, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I think as we discussed earlier, maybe they want to be more uh, time lasting. You know, they they yeah. don't want to change the entries uh, so frequently. So yeah. one way to do this is to have the more stable, maybe less yeah. controversial. Yeah. For instance, you you, do, you can find uh, the the name of Mao Zedong, but you have Mao, the entry Mao Zedong Sixiang. Oh, really? No Mao Zedong? It, no. Even Mao Zedong not in, as a dictionary entry? No, my, there is the Mao Zedong Sixiang because it's a modifier. Huh. It, the association with the concept of the theory of Mao Zedong. Oh, that's that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's very interesting. So maybe they stick to the principle of not, you know, including not not to include. Um, and, I mean, it, it's it's very difficult to also to justify the problem. It's not an encyclopedia, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. If not, uh, let's thank um, Dr. Ramanelli for a very interesting talk. And uh, uh, also thanks to our audience for the very interesting questions, comments, anecdotes, and everything. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Okay.